the iPad has just gotten a whole lot better. As you may know, I currently don't own a laptop and that's because I do all my work on my Mac mini. However, I felt like I never really needed to buy a laptop because the iPad has been my go-to computer for whenever I'm on the go or when I wanna sit back and relax away from the desk. I'm able to do all my photo editing on it, deliver galleries to clients, answer emails, but it was always missing one thing. As someone who creates content for YouTube and other social media, I was patiently waiting for one of these platforms to build a version for iPad to make the iPad a little bit more useful. While Blackmagic beat everyone to the punch and released their version of DaVinci Resolve for the iPad, and we're gonna talk about it. Right off the bat, if you're coming from the desktop version of DaVinci Resolve, you'll notice that the iPad version is basically the same thing, and that's because they're using the exact same code base as the desktop version. So if you're used to color grading in Resolve, you can hop on the iPad and you still have all your features like nodes, keying, scopes, etc. This is a free version of DaVinci Resolve, but you can upgrade to the studio version if you want things like noise reduction for a one-time fee of $95. Now you might be thinking, if it's the exact same code base, why do we only have the cut and color page? And I think this is because the app is so new and they wanted to push it out for people to use right away. They wanted to focus on the two main tabs that people would need. Now, because it is the same code base, we technically do still have access to those pages and we can use them using keyboard shortcuts. I'll show you how to do this a little bit later in the video, but as you can see, we now have the edit fusion fair light and deliver page. And just to show you what I mean about them perfecting just those two pages, if we go into the Fairlight tab and click on Mixer, it's supposed to pop up on the right here, but it doesn't matter what I do, even if I try to expand the window, I can't actually use it. So that's why I think those pages aren't available to us yet. As for actually editing on DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, it works flawlessly. I can scrub and play through my 4K 422 10-bit footage from my Sony a7 IV with no issues at all. It takes a bit of getting used to if you're not using a keyboard or mouse, but obviously if you wanna edit faster, use keyboard shortcuts and just have a better overall experience, I would highly recommend plugging in a keyboard and mouse. Now I'm using the iPad Air 4 and this doesn't have the M1 or M2 chip and it still works flawlessly. However, if you are using a version of iPad without an M1 or M2 chip, it does have some limitations. For example, DaVinci Resolve works on any newer iPad with an A12 Bionic chip or higher, even works on the iPad mini, but for those iPads that don't have the M1 or M2 chip, some of those limitations are that you can't export at a resolution higher than HD, which is 1920 by 1080, which is kind of annoying considering some iPads like the iPad Air 4, I know for a fact can export 4K footage. There is a workaround though. Let's say I'm out for the weekend and I don't have my computer with me, but I wanna get a head start on my YouTube video. I can basically do 90% of my editing, cutting footage, adding music, adding effects, titles, color grading, all on the iPad. And then when I get back from my trip, I can just transfer the project file, which is the DRP file, to my computer and finish the edit on there, but also change my timeline's resolution to 4K and export at 4K. But let's dive into Resolve on the iPad and give you a quick little tutorial so you can get started right away. First things first, like I said, you'll have the cut and color page, but I've personally never been a fan of the cut page, so I'll show you how to access all the other pages. Click Option, Command K on your keyboard. If you don't have a keyboard connected to your iPad, you might not be able to do this. Once it's open, under Command, scroll down and click on Workspace. Then find the Show Page dropdown and you'll see all your pages. Edit, Fairlight, Fusion, etc. Yours will have no keys assigned to them, so assign them. I would suggest using these keys because you won't have issues with them being used anywhere else. After that, I would also suggest changing your Ripple Cut keys for faster editing. Click on Trim, find the Ripple dropdown and change the End to Playhead with the E key and the start of playhead to the W key. Make sure you save this keyboard layout and you're good to go. Click on the settings logo in the bottom right corner and it's time to configure your project settings. 
Make sure you change your timeline's resolution and frame rate. Then I'd suggest going into image scaling and change input scaling from scale entire image to fit to scale full frame with crop. For some reason, I was having issues when I would import a vertical video. It wasn't scaling to the size of the frame. It would only scale so much until it started to crop. So this fixes that. Once you've done those three things, it's time to start importing your media. You can click on the media tab in the top left, or you can open up your edit page using our new keyboard shortcut, then open the media pool on the top left and click this little icon with the page and the down arrow. This is the import media button. When you click on this, you have a few options. The first two will look for media in your files app. So if you have a drive connected to your iPad or something connected to your iPad, you will import those through the files app. Then import from photos will look for media in your iPad's camera roll. I've already imported clips from my a7 IV to the iPad's files app, so I'll bring these into the media pool. Now all we have to do is drag our clips onto the timeline and start editing. To cut down our footage to our desired length, I like to use those new keys W and E to ripple delete sections of our clip. So if we drag our playhead here, we can click W and it'll cut and delete everything from that clip to the left of the playhead. Using the E key, we can do the same thing on the opposite side. Clicking on the effects tab, we can utilize built-in effects, titles, and generators just like we can on the desktop version. If you have any custom LUTs, fusion effects, titles, or fonts, we can still import these into DaVinci Resolve on the iPad by using the iPad's Files app. If you go to the iPad's Files app and click on My iPad, you'll see a DaVinci Resolve folder. Once in there, the folders that are important to us are Fusion, LUT, and Resolve Project Library. Fusion is where we can add in any fusion effects and custom fonts. Our LUT folder is where we can import custom LUTs. As you can see, I have mine right here, which you can find in the LUTs tab when color grading. And it's as easy as dragging the LUT onto a node. To add nodes, all you have to do is click on this button right here. Clicking on it will add a serial node, and by holding on it, you'll have the ability to add parallel and layer nodes. While you're in the color grading tab, you still have the ability to generate LUTs and export stills, just like the desktop version. All you have to do is click on the clips button at the top here, hold on our clip to generate a LUT, and hold on our viewer to grab a still. So it's pretty amazing that you get the exact same version of DaVinci Resolve with all of its amazing features on such a portable device. Overall, I'm excited to finally have a good video editor on the iPad. One that I can use both on my computer and on my iPad, use the same effects and titles, and have the ability to start and edit on my iPad and continue it on the desktop if I need to. Anyway, if you found this video useful, make sure you hit that like button, and if you wanna see more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.